Jason Thor's Amsterdam. The medic playing time is another 25 minutes, so we should be able to reach the gate at 20 minutes to 8 o'clock on the local time. I hear people talking about we have disruptive technology. Our position on it is maybe a little more gentle in the sense that technology doesn't have to destroy economies. We don't believe they should. We believe that they should be transformative to help people migrate or progress from one level to the other. Disruptive technologies, well, they just don't typically work very well. So transformative technology works like nature itself. It considers all the factors functional, economic, environmental, social, and political. It doesn't produce toxic waste antithetical to life. It doesn't attempt to bankrupt an existing system or put humans out of work. Why would you want to bankrupt your customer? It's transformative. It transforms. It doesn't trash. Montgomery Childs and his wife Tracy are on their way to Baltimore. Monty is going to deliver his third presentation to the Electric Universe group. Proceed about two miles to Lake Shore Boulevard West. For two years, he has been developing a way to test the Electric Sun model. In my professional life, one of the things I do is diagnose systems and make them stable. Stable systems are often the consequence of a stable process. There are billions of stars in our galaxy. For as long as we have been watching them, their luminosity, spectral nature, and thermal characteristics have remained relatively constant. Statistically, it points to a very stable system. A supernova, or a pulsar, is so rare an event as to be considered an outlier, and not that relevant in the overall equation. In industry, if you have something as statistically stable as the stars appear to be, this suggests a relatively simple process. And we have a tool for studying process. In January of 2012, David Talbot invited Monty Childs to give a presentation at the Electric Universe Conference in Las Vegas. Monty introduced design of experiments as a methodology for testing the electric universe model. Of the 300 people in the audience, few had heard of the concept of design of experiments. But one person, Scott Mainwaring, became very intrigued. Sapphire, stellar atmospheric function and regulation experiment. So what we want to do is we want to validate the EU model as it relates to the sun. At the next and, conference uh, in 2013, Monty suggested a number of experiments that might be done to test the electric universe model by focusing on the sun. The electric universe group asked him to write up a formal proposal for a project designed to do exactly that. I can't imagine how you could ever test the thermal nuclear fusion model of the sun. To my knowledge, we've never been able to replicate sustained nuclear fusion on Earth. But the electric sun model is different. Electricity is something we've been experimenting with for centuries. 
and electricity in the form of plasma, even though the word plasma is relatively recent. We've been aware of this phenomena for over a century and a half. Two years of research has led me to the conclusion that the electric sun model might be boiled down to a fundamental process. Charged plasma affecting matter of a different electrical potential. Now charged plasma, matter, and electrical potential, these are things that can be experimented with in a lab. Scott Mainwaring gave me a paper written in 1879 by Sir William Crookes. Michael Faraday was 24 years old when he coined the phrase radiant matter to describe what he believed was the fourth state of matter. Sixty years later, Sir William Crookes was one of the first to truly experiment with this fourth state of matter. He placed rubies in a vacuum tube filled with a rarefied gas. There was an anode at one end, a cathode at the other. He introduced sufficient voltage to ignite the radiant matter. The rubies started glowing red. Crookes talked about radiant matter and phosphorescence. The radiant matter is now called plasma. I read Crook's work and studied the photographs and work of Christian Berkman, created between 1896 and 1913. In his Torella experiments, Berkman used an electrified globe in a vacuum chamber. The images he produced are remarkably similar to modern photographs of the sun. Robert Quinn and Ralph Fiorito produced similar images in 1967 while attempting to generate plasma stability. The Electric Universe people had already seen a similarity between Berkman's Torello and the interaction between the Earth and the Sun. I suspect the underlying process is charged plasma affecting matter of a different electrical potential. I'm wondering if it might actually be the process that makes stars shine. Plausibility, feasibility, viability, and capability, and that doesn't just apply to whether or not we can replicate the phenomena in a laboratory experiment, but it also means the means by which we measure, are they capable? No theoretical models, no extrapolations, no interpolations, no mathematical adjustments of the data. Do we have a ruler that we can actually all agree on that's a standard? Determine if prior experiments require At the Albuquerque the Conference in 2013, Monty Childs presents a detailed proposal for how to proceed with the tests. Determine if the experiment is feasible. So all these things have to be addressed right up front before we even start spending a nickel. It means that we have the ability to modify or adjust its potential relative to its environment. Okay? So you're shaking your head, so yes. So these guys may want to go to a megawatt or something, and then you might melt the whole show. But the, the, that's the other. Key people from the Electric the Universe Group are, offer questions and suggestions. Like do. I can take a look at the chamber design and its boundary conditions. Then give it their support. Do it or not with George's existing chamber. Bruce Mainwaring and Scott Mainwaring of the Mainwaring Archive Foundation agree to finance the project under the auspices of the International Science Foundation. It will be called the Stellar Atmospheric Function in Regulation Experiment, the SAFIRE project. The aim of SAFIRE is to explore the electrical nature of the sun's environment and, by implication, the processes involved in the functioning of stars. It's going to go from hydrogen here, mixing with iron, to helium, 
and it's going to be a series of pretty, probably pretty Over the next six months, I spent a lot of time on the phone with a number of the Electric Universe people. Degrees. It's not like it's, you know, 10 trillion degrees like the... Bit by yeah, bit, like I could see a potential team slowly sun. taking shape. There's going to be a series of tame steps that are... Yeah. Uh, that release all this energy. Monty and Tracy Childs arrive in Baltimore. The Natural Philosophy Alliance is holding their 20th annual conference at the University of Maryland, College Park. They have invited the Electric Universe Group to contribute presentations. The Electric Universe, of course, sees all of this complex plasma behavior in terms of circuits, and the electric currents are what form the magnetic fields. It's the electric currents that are primary, the magnetic fields are in effect. And ask ourselves now the question that has never been asked in 70 years of solar physics. Is the sun truly an island in space? With no electrical connection to billions of stars and the sea of plasma that constitutes the Milky Way. What we want to do is capture in real time not just a qualitative... Monty way, offers a summary of I'm the Sapphire happy, project. See if we can pick up any ion acceleration occurring just outside the sheath. Given that the electric universe hypothesis is challenging current conventional theory, so you can imagine electron temperatures of 10 million... I was expecting a bit of resistance at the NPA. Okay. So 10 million but NPA people didn't seem at all intimidated by what we were proposing to do. Quite the contrary. We so have over 40 kilowatts, so we'll get fusion. Yeah. I found them very helpful and very encouraging. So you'll get fusion, yeah. guaranteed. As guaranteed. long as you have discharges, you'll get fusion. Yeah, right. so we'll be other coils that pick up the and up, it, up. Yeah, it takes off. Uh, it doesn't take off. That, that one just. Uh, so transformative technology works like nature itself. It considers all the factors functional, economic, environmental, social, and political. It doesn't produce toxic waste antithetical to life. It doesn't attempt to bankrupt an existing system or put humans out of work. Why would you want to bankrupt your customer? It's transformative. It transforms. It doesn't trash. These are some of the capabilities of the Sapphire Lab. I won't list them out loud. This is just to give you an idea of the potential of the lab, and we keep adding to the list. To be pragmatic in the real world, we had to select a few to take forward into commercial applications. Here are the capabilities we have chosen. A fully functioning plasma laboratory for experiments, an energy generating reactor for producing clean energy, an energy generating reactor for remediating nuclear waste, 